The Lord be with you. Let us take a moment of silence to center ourselves on God. All those able, please rise for our call to worship. Christ is the image of the invisible God. All things have been created in him through Christ. Christ is before all things. All the universe is held together in him. Christ is the head of the church. Let us pray. Eternal God, you sent Jesus Christ to rule over all things and made us servants in your kingdom. By your Holy Spirit, we ask that you empower us to love the unloved and to minister to all in need. Then at last, bring us into your eternal realm where we may worship you and adore you and be welcomed into your everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
please be seated. Well, good morning. It is great to see all of you here today on this Christ the King Sunday. A special welcome to any visitors among us. We hope and we pray that our service is meaningful to your faith. I invite all of you at this time to please sign the pew register, and if need be, pass the register down the pew. And I will call your attention to a few announcements. First, a big thank you to all of you from the so-and-so ministry. You might remember a couple of weeks ago, they had a big bazaar. It was their first bazaar. And they delivered a check in the amount of $3,000 to Port in the Storm, which is the new homeless youth shelter. And so from so-and-so ministry and myself, thank you and thank God for your generosity. We will continue with some good news. It's my great joy and honor to recognize this morning our Director of Youth Ministry, Rachel McNeil, who recently took the first step in the ordination process to the Ministry of Word and Sacrament. Last Tuesday, Rachel became an inquirer in the ordination process, and we um, want to say thank you, and we are behind you, Rachel, and we love you. Finally, we do need a little help as our church continues to grow, so does the, the bulletins. And so we need some help with the bulletin prep. You'll see this announcement on the back side of the goldenrod insert, and it won't take much, but we need some help. So maybe if you have some time on your hands, you can see there Thursdays between 2 and 3.30. Um, we could really use the help, so please give the office some, a call or email us. We would greatly appreciate your help. I invite all of the children to come forward now for a moment with our Director of Youth Ministries, Ms. Rachel McNeil. Okay, good morning. Okay, there are kids coming, yay. I was going to say you all get to be my kids today, but... This works too. Good morning. All right, can you all tell me what this is? Yes, this is a king. So I have a picture of a king, a very regal looking king, as you can see. He's got a crown on his head. He's sitting on a throne. He has a scepter. What kind of things do kings do? They rule. They rule different parts of land. They're kind of in charge of everything. Um, they have a lot of servants usually. He's got some really nice clothes on. Well, today is a special day in the church calendar. Today is called Christ the King Sunday. So actually today we celebrate Jesus as our king, but Jesus is a different kind of king. So I brought a picture here of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. See, he looks a lot different than the other king. He's got very simple clothing on, no jewels. Um, he is kneeling on the floor, and he is being a servant to his disciple and his friend. Um, I also brought another picture of him. This sculpture is of Jesus after his crucifixion, and his mother Mary is holding him. And as we see, like, Jesus is a different kind of king. He's humble, and he serves, and we're called to be like Christ um, and serve others as well. Um, but Christ is also our eternal king, which also sets him apart from earthly kings who don't last forever. So let's have a prayer. Gracious God, we are so grateful that you sent us Jesus, your son, to be our humble, loving, gracious, and eternal king. Help us remember today and always, Lord, that Jesus is the ruler of the universe, the world, and our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, and we have worship bags if you want some over here. Friends, as we prepare to hear God's holy word this morning, let us first go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, 
We ask that you would open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to each one of us today. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and friend. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes from Jeremiah 23, verses 1 through 6 from the Old Testament. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer, or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called, the Lord of our righteousness, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 23, verses 33 through 43, and may be found on page 76 in your pew Bible. Listen now to God's holy word. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right, and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. There was an inscription over him that read, This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanged there kept deriding Jesus and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do, do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise
If it weren't for the crucifixion, the story of Jesus would be a lot more enjoyable. I mean, who can't get behind a guy who believed in loving people and doing good to others? But the whole crucifixion thing is where Christians get into muddy waters. If it weren't for the ugly death on a device of torture, if Jesus died of a ripe old age, peacefully in his sleep, the entire message of the gospel would be a lot more palatable. But then, that would not be the Christian message. Jesus hung on a cross, suffocating to death, and that is how people died when they were crucified. Their lungs collapsed. So Jesus hung on a cross, suffocating to death, nailed and tied to a beam of wood. And even as he died, people continued to taunt him. The leaders scoffed at him, saying, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God. And then the soldiers also mocked him, saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And then there was that one criminal who taunted him while dying also. Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. You can almost hear him laughing. The Gospel of St. Luke leads us from a sweet little birth story with shepherds and singing angels to a bloody death in 23 chapters. In 23 chapters, God incarnate goes from a cooing baby to a criminal king on death row. But you, you should know that in the entirety of the book of Luke, Jesus never claims to be a king or the Messiah. In fact, Jesus never directly claims any grandiose title for himself at all. And yet, there he hangs as a criminal king. Today is Christ the King Sunday. Today is the day that we remember that Christ is ruler of all. Today, Christ the King Sunday is the last day of the Christian liturgical year. Next week begins a new Christian year with Advent. On Christ the King Sunday, we are called as Christians to remember who we pledge our ultimate allegiance to. No matter our political party or nationality, if we call ourselves Christians, then we must first admit that Christ is our highest authority. Higher than kings of the past or presidents of the future, Christ is our ultimate authority. So, as Jesus hangs on the cross, he is first addressed by the religious leaders as a phony messiah and a bogus king. They even went to the added trouble to further embarrass him by putting a plaque on top of the cross, King of the Jews. It's interesting to note that in the text, before the accusations of the religious leaders and um, 
criminals and soldiers begin, and even after these accusations end, Jesus speaks. Jesus speaks on the front end, and Jesus speaks on the back end. His words are bookends. They are the bookends of the last moments of his life. And it's telling that what surrounds the naked violence of that day are tender words. Jesus' words are incongruous to the context. They are mind-boggling. Try to imagine, if you can, try to imagine yourself dying in some painful way as a criminal over something that you did not do. There, as you are dying painfully, now you have people mocking you, taunting you. I suspect that most of us, myself included, would lash out in fury or make claims to innocence or just die in shock and say nothing at all. But Jesus frames his death like he framed his life. It was framed with courage and conviction and love. Remember what he said as he's being crucified. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. This is one of three things that Jesus said that day. Forgive them. Dying words don't get much deeper. And then, not long before he does die, the other criminal being crucified, not the one who taunted him, but the other one, that criminal hanging on a cross says to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus' response, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This whole scene is mind-boggling. Here we have God incarnate, dying of suffocation on a cross and being ridiculed. And what does God incarnate do? What does the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of the entire universe do there on the cross as he's being mocked? He forgives his enemies, the very ones killing him. And then, and then he also welcomes a criminal into paradise. It is a shocking scene. The bottom line, or at least one of the bottom lines, is this. Jesus' death is meant to alter our perspective on life. The words recorded are supposed to alter how we treat our enemies and criminals. Jesus' death is supposed to transform how we think and how we live. I will tell you honestly that this text challenges me. All kinds of questions arise like, can I really live like Jesus died? Can I forgive my enemies and show mercy to criminals? It is hard. 
I do think, though, if we claim to be Christians, then we are challenged to live like the king who hangs on a cross. If we claim that the crucified king is our ultimate authority, then we must weigh this against our loyalties to everything else, to people, to political parties, to anything. If, if we claim that the crucified king is our king, then we will govern ourselves like he governed himself. We will live by the law of love. We will show forgiveness and mercy. And one day, one day, like that criminal on the cross, one day we too will be welcomed into paradise. To God be the glory, today and for all eternity. Amen. Please remain standing and join me as we affirm our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which are printed in your bulletin. As one body, we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We are all called into the Church of Jesus Christ by baptism. Within the community of the church, some members are called to particular service as deacons, as ruling elders, and as teaching elders or ministers of word and sacrament. Ordination is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us. Representing the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the session of Memorial Presbyterian Church now ordains and installs Schuyler Kyle to the office of ruling elder. It is the practice of Memorial that among the ruling elders we choose one youth in our church who has exemplified responsibility and wisdom and a calling. And so today it is our honor to ordain and install Schuyler. Schuyler, do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him, Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, do you? Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal, and God's word to you, do you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in our confessions as authentic and reliable expositions of what Scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Do you and will you? Will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ? under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions, will you? Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit, will you? Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world, will you? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church, do you? Will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love, will you? And finally, Schuyler, Will you be a faithful elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in governing bodies of the church, and in your own ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? Do we, the members of the church, accept Schuyler as chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? If so, indicate by saying, we do. we do. Do we agree to encourage her to respect her decisions 
and to follow as she helps to guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church. If so, indicate by saying, we do. We do. I'd like to invite any currently serving elders or deacons to join us up here at the baptismal font for a laying on of hands. If you are currently serving as an elder or a deacon in the church. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon Schuyler, who has been chosen as a leader in your church. Grant her the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Give her a spirit of truthfulness that she may show the compassion of Christ and rightly govern your people. Give her the gifts of your Holy Spirit to build up the church and to lead with compassion and vision. In the walk of faith and for the work of ministry, give her gladness and strength, discipline and hope, humility, humor, courage, and an abiding sense of your presence. And all of God's children say, Amen. Schuyler, you are now an elder in the Church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. I charge you to be faithful in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Lord. Whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of our Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Please share the peace of Christ with one another. <laughs> We will now go to God with our prayers of the people. Please note that today our prayers of the people will be read and prayed responsively. So you can look in your bulletin to see our responsive prayers of the people. Let us pray. Gracious God, rejoicing in your blessings, trusting in your loving care for all, we bring you our silent prayers for the world. We pray for the created world. In the life of our world, we pray now, O oh God, for our country. In the life of our land, we pray for people in need.
in the lives of those in need. We pray for family and friends. We thank you, God, for all of our loved ones, especially this week as Thanksgiving approaches. We pray also that the peace of Jesus Christ would be near to those for whom the holidays will be difficult, for those who will be missing their dear loved ones this week and in the coming weeks. In the lives of those we love, we pray now for the church. In the life of your church, Eternal God, we give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all praise and glory forever. Amen. And now as one body, we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his own disciples, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, scripture reminds us that to whom much is given, much is also expected. So with joyful and grateful hearts this morning, let us now give back to God with our tithes and our offerings.
give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, God, for setting us in communities, for families, for friends, for companions at work, for the kindness of strangers, and for children who offer us hope for the future. For these and all blessings, we give you thanks, loving God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Before offering the charge and benediction, as we go into this week, which is, of course, the week of Thanksgiving, I want to put a challenge to you that you make a list of 10 things that you are grateful for, and I'm going to check with you, and I'm going to look at you and ask, what are you grateful for next Sunday? So make sure you have a list together. I charge you, sisters and brothers, to go now into the world and to love the Lord your God with all of your heart all of your mind, all of your strength, and all of your soul, and to love your neighbor as your very own self. And may the grace, peace, and mercy of God Almighty rest upon each of you today and throughout eternity. Amen.